Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be talking about cell phone etiquette, screen time etiquette, and addiction basically because I don't think you can talk about one without the other. And I've been wanting to talk about this subject for a very long time, but especially since my book Polish Your Poise with Madame Chic came out uh, last November because I do write about that in this book. Now, I know, <laughs> just like with the common courtesy etiquette chat that we recently had, that every single person watching this video will have something to say about this, will have a story, will have observations about the way that our society is going. And I think it's important that we sit down and we talk about this, we admit our own faults in this area, and I, I think it's just an important discussion to have to see how we can better ourselves and, and how we can make the world a better place. We can embrace technology, but we don't need to let it completely overrun our lives and change who we are as people for the worse. <laughs> so I want to start off by reading a, a small section from Polish Your Poise with Madame Chic about screen time. So I write on page 162, we have all seen them. They are everywhere. You can't escape them. People staring at their smartphones like zombies in restaurants, walking the dog, in the middle of a movie, while driving, waiting in line, in class, outside of class, during the ballet, during intermission, at the coffee shop, while watching TV, while out with their kids, at the park, at the school, during meetings. This new dependence on the screen is changing the way we live and not necessarily for the better. The addiction to the screen and its use as a crutch in social situations brings people further away from poise. It brings them away from manners and social grace. I will take it a step further and suggest that it not only keeps us antisocial, but washes away whatever social graces we used to have. And I go on, but I'm going to stop uh, right now because I just wanted to read that introductory paragraph to you. Everywhere you go, you see these phones attached to people's hands. This is such a recent thing and of course, there are so many benefits to having a smartphone and it's great. I, you know, you always joke with your family. Let's say you're going on a trip and you get lost or you're trying to, you're running late and you think, what did I do before I had a cell phone? What, how did I contact people? So of course they're wonderful and it just depends on how you use them. But I do think that the majority of the population who own a smartphone are addicted to looking at their smartphone. And I am actually among those people, I will go ahead and admit it, that I have these constant urges and impulses to check my phone, check my email, see if somebody's texted me, um, check the news. It's the first thing I think of when I'm waiting for something. If I'm waiting in line, uh, I immediately have that urge to just reach into my handbag and get my cell phone out and look at it. So what we need to discuss today is, is this a good thing? What's it doing to us? Where do we draw the line and how can we help ourselves uh, to not do this? Now, I think that we all could use some discipline in this area and myself included. And I try to implement that discipline. Sometimes I'll be standing in a long line at the grocery store and you know, I don't see any problem with pulling it out if you're waiting for a long time, you know, to check the news or your email. It just depends, right? But if you can't not do it, if there's like this, <laughs> if there's a problem there, like you just have to have it in your hand, then that's something to definitely look at. I kind of worry about the younger generation who have never known anything else because uh, one time when I was flying to New York uh, a few years ago, I remember seeing this young man and he must have been uh, probably 16 or 17 and I noticed him in the terminal before we got on the plane I noticed him on the plane and I noticed him when we were getting off the plane and I I felt like the entire seven hour you know trip from seeing him in the terminal to the plane ride to seeing him out of the terminal he was just looking at his phone the whole time and I'm, I'm like thinking this is just whoa that's not healthy you know we need to look up and notice the people around us. Now, my editor, Trish Todd at Simon & Schuster, um, she knows me so well, she sent me this article last year from the New York Times. Basically, 
the very famous theater artist Patti Lupone uh, was starring in the play Shows for Days. And there was somebody in the audience who was texting the whole time. You know, her screen was lighting up. It was causing a distraction for, for her, obviously, because she, was, she noticed it as an actress on stage. And, and so this, this person was texting. And how many of us have had that experience? Whether you're in a movie theater, a play, the ballet, any performance, your child's performance at school, how many of us have experienced that? Where somebody is on their phone texting. It is so rude. <laughs> anyway. I love this story because then what Patti Lupone did was she took action. It says, without breaking character, Miss Lupone walked into the audience and took the woman's phone. I just think that is so brilliant. I love that she just took that phone out of her hand. She returned it to her afterward. But when we are to the point where we can't even put the phone down to enjoy an experience, to live life, to live in the present moment, what is, what is it coming to? I'm so glad that when I lived in Paris back in 2001, I had a cell phone, but it was one of those archaic ones. It was, wasn't a smartphone, obviously. I'm so glad I didn't have a smartphone back then. I mean, I might've recorded more, you know, but I just, I feel like I was able to just be in the present moment and experience life. Whereas if, if I had a smartphone and if I was one of those addicted teenagers to my phone, I would have just been looking at it the whole time, you know? So there's only so much that you can look at Facebook and Instagram and check your email and things like that before you start to feel a bit vapid. The next thing I would like to discuss is cell phones at restaurants, both for adults and for children. So let's talk about the adults first. I think that it's poor etiquette to take out your cell phone and look at it while you are having dinner with somebody. I think that the cell phones should go away. If you are a parent and you're worried that the babysitter's gonna call you, you can have your cell phone out. What I usually do is I have my handbag sitting next to me on the chair or the booth, wherever I am, and I put my cell phone on top of it uh, on silent. So if it lights up, I can just see if it's the babysitter or if there's something wrong, you know. So I understand as a parent wanting to look at your phone like that. But I do think that it's rude to pull out your phone and to just, I don't know, what are you doing? Texting or <laughs> looking at the news while the other person is like, hello, I'm here. I think that during meals, we should be present with our dining companions. Now let's talk about the kids because this is a very, probably a touchy subject. And I just want to say right off the bat, I am not judging people who do this. Uh, but I am going to talk about my observations and why I do not let my children have an iPad or a cell phone when we go to a restaurant. Now, I, I have to say that eating at a restaurant with small children is stressful. It's really stressful for me. I'm sure it is for you if you've you know experienced it before because they are wiggly they complain they are messy and you know sometimes you just want to relax and i understand that that's why i understand why parents give their children the cell phone or the ipad so that they can just sit down and have a relaxing meal however this is why i choose to not do it because i do believe that the children have to learn at some point how to be, how to behave in a restaurant, and how to deal with those uncomfortable emotions of either boredom or whatever they're experiencing at the restaurant. They need to learn how to be an active member of the family and partake in the discussion. So if from just the very beginning of their restaurant experience, they are just given a screen and they just look at the screen the whole time, yes, you may have a peaceful meal, but what are they learning from that? Are they, are they gaining any valuable experience from that? Um, so we don't allow screens at the table, whether it be at home or at a restaurant, and we don't allow our children to look at them. Now, I'm not judging you if you do allow your children to look at the screens, but I do just wanna put that food for thought out there. Uh, I do think it's sad. I remember one time we, uh, we went out to Chinese food, the four of us, uh, in Santa Monica and 
my girls were just so excited. <laughs> they were just standing on the booth and I kept trying to get them to sit down and, and just eat their food. And we were just, you know, it's, a, it's hard work. It is hard work to train children. So I was just feeling a bit exhausted with that. And I remember that two booths over from us, there was a, a mother and her two sons and they were a bit older, the sons, they were probably like eight or nine. And the sons were behaving, everyone was behaving so well. Everyone was so calm. And I just thought, how does she do that? I couldn't believe it. I just, I wanted to ask her on the way out. But then on the way out, as I stood up, I noticed that the two sons were watching a tablet or an, a, an iPad and the mother was just sitting there. And I just felt like that was so depressing because they weren't interacting. What's the point of going to the restaurant? I mean, and do they can continue to look at the screen while they're eating? So I realized that I would rather have the chaos of trying to train my children to calm down and to, and to eat and sit like adults and enjoy the restaurant experience than have them just stare at their screens the whole time because that is not an experience. There are so many facets to this video and I don't want it to run too long, but here are some solutions. Number one, if we have children, because we always have to start young, right? Because we are raising the next generation. We must ask ourselves, what sort of exposure do we want them to have to the screen? I give my children very limited exposure. Of course, they love the iPad. They always wanna play the iPad, but I probably let them play it once a week on a Saturday, if that. You know, sometimes we'll go for a long time. If they don't ask for it, I don't offer it. Um, because I want them to, I would rather that they cultivate their imagination. We didn't grow up with these things and we know that you don't need this as a child. It, it's not a necessary part of childhood to play apps and video games and, and watch YouTube videos on, on a screen. So I don't feel guilty about depriving them of that at all. They understand the technology and they know how it works, but I don't want them to develop an addiction to it. Number two, we must watch ourselves around our children. Are we constantly on our phones when we're around our children? Do we, so, it, do we feel so overwhelmed that we're just looking at it all the time? And is that all that they see? Many of you will have children who say to you, mommy, get off that, get off the phone. You know, my children have said that to me before and it breaks my heart I think, oh my goodness, I don't want them to look at me and think that I am just this screen zombie just staring at my, at my phone, you know? So we need to watch ourselves and how much exposure, uh, you know, we give ourselves. Which leads to the next point, which is, it is okay. You can check your phone a healthy amount. If you're waiting in a long line at the grocery store, there's no problem with it. But if it's becoming a crutch where you take it with you everywhere, where you become antisocial because of it. I have been to parties where I see people just staring at their phones because, I, it's probably too scary to go out and just strike up a conversation with somebody new. And that's sad. If it's getting in the way of human interaction, um, and you know this, you will know, then it's time to just limit how much you look at your phone. Next thought is to always be considerate of those around you. If you are in a movie theater, in a play, in an environment where uh, you would be disturbing other people by looking at your phone or at a screen, then this is the time to put it away and, and just enjoy the experience. My daughters had their ballet recital uh, a few months ago and I was sitting next to a lady who, uh, you know, her daughter had already gone, but my daughters were still going, you know, they still had to go. And so while well, during my daughter's performance, she had her phone out texting pictures and everything and I'm looking at them but I just I thought that was rude because it did distract me for a bit this bright light and the texting noise so you must think about other people around you as well there's so much more I will have to do a part two on this video because there are so many more facets to this conversation and I can't get to them all today but I did want to begin this discussion and I want to hear from you what are your observations about cell phones and screen time, screen addiction in this modern society? How has it changed people? And you know, what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a comment, please, in the comment section below, and your comment could be chosen as comment of the week on my blog, The Daily Connoisseur. 
Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time on The Daily Connoisseur. Bye.